Another way we can get equivalent equations is using multiplication. However, multiplication is a little bit trickier. We are allowed to multiply both sides of an equation by the same value, but there are restrictions on what that value can be. Let's see why. Suppose that we know that x represents the number 7, and we decide that we'd like to multiply both sides of this equation by the number 3. Then 3 times x equals 3 times 7. That is, 3x equals 21. And that's pretty clearly true, right? That pretty clearly works. If we plug in 7 for x, 3 times 7 really is 21. So again, with this simple equation, it's really easy to see why this works. Hmm. Let's try it with a slightly more complicated equation. Suppose that we know that 2x plus 1 equals 5, and we decide to multiply both sides of this equation by 4. Then we'll have 4 times the expression 2x plus 1 equals 4 times 5. Notice we had to multiply the entire left-hand side by 4. Why didn't we need the parentheses when we were adding? Well, we didn't need the parentheses when we were adding because order of operations already said that the addition should happen last. We need the parentheses when we're multiplying because typically multiplication doesn't happen last and we want to make sure that it does. So now, to simplify both sides, we just use the distributive property. 4 times 2 is 8, so we have 8x plus 4 is 4 times 5 is 20. Let's make sure that that really worked out. Let's make sure these equations really are equivalent. Looking at this first equation, um, we can see that, I think we can guess that x probably represents the number 2, because 2 times 2 plus 1 does in fact equal 5. Does x equal 2 in the second equation as well? Well. 8 times 2 plus 4, that's 16 plus 4, and yes, that really is 20. So that really did work. Okay, now let's do something really weird. I'm starting again with a simple equation, x equals 6. What would happen if I decided to multiply both sides of this equation by 0? Well, look, what happens when we multiply any number by 0? If we multiply any number by 0, we just get 0. I don't care what the number is. I don't even need to know what the number is. 0 times x, then, is still just 0. And, of course, 0 times 6 is 0. Notice what happened. This equation up here has only one solution. But this equation down here is true no matter what x is. This, the second equation that we ended up with has every number as a solution. That's no good. These are not equivalent. So we need to include that in our rule. We need to include that we can multiply both sides of an equation by a number, but that that number cannot be 0. Any other number, it turns out, will work. It's only 0 that causes this problem, because only 0 has this property that no matter what we multiply it by, we still get 0. 
So we're ready to state this rule explicitly as well. So this is the multiplicative property of equality. Given an equation, if we multiply the expressions on both sides by expressions representing the same number, provided that number is not zero, we obtain an equivalent expression. Or, just to put it in shorter terms, we can multiply both sides of an equation by the same thing, but not by zero. Now that not by zero right, gives us an extra complication. Because of that rule about multiplying by zero, we have to be very careful about multiplying with variable expressions. For now, we'll only multiply both sides of an equation just by a number. The other caution to keep in mind when you're using the multiplicative property is that because of order of operations, we need to be sure that that multiplication happens last in each expression. When in doubt, include the parentheses. If they aren't doing any work for you, you can just drop them. The last thing to keep in mind is, just like the additive property, this is a solving step. That is, well, it keeps the same solutions to the equation. It keeps the variable representing the same value. Multiplying both sides of the equation by a number changes the value of each expression.